All right, we are finishing chapter 9, or have finished chapter 9, which discusses the reaction of alkynes. And at the end of chapter 9, we've been asked to try problems wherein you may have more than one reaction necessary to take you from the starting material to your final product. So here we have a 1,2-dibromo butane that we're going to propose a pathway to from just acetylene or ethylene. And so these problems can be very difficult because they don't come just from one chapter. They may come from two or maybe even three chapters. So I want to run through a type of problem wherein you have to go through, let's say, two or three reactions. Now, you need to know that it could be up to even maybe four or five reactions. We could have talked about, and maybe we will in lecture, how we can make ethyne from ethane just CH3 connected to a CH3, how we could make this, and that would add in the number of steps necessary to make, in the final uh, in this case, the 1,2-dibromobutane. Uh, so let's work through this problem knowing that we're going to have not mechanistic steps, but multiple reaction steps, and you can work either synthetically proposing pathways to this product or steps, like going from first base to second base to third base to home. Or we can work what's called retrosynthetically. You can say, I'm not sure how to get started on this end, but I'm thinking, hey, if I had a preceding structure to this of a certain form, I could make the 1,2-dibromo uh, butane. For example, let's work retrosynthetically, not directly back to our starting material that we proposed, ethylene, but maybe just say we'll go backwards, like again, yeah, home base to third, I will propose if I would have had one butene, I could have made, through a simple addition of Br2, I could have made the 1,2-dibromo butane, a polar reaction, which we know out of Chapter 6. So this is a retrosynthesis approach where we're working backwards and saying, okay, now I'll worry about how I could have made this. So we can... Oh, I'm sorry, that. So we could work, continue to do that retrosynthetically. We could say, hey, I have an alkene here. I have an alkyne up here. This has four carbons. This only has two. How can I make the following butene working backwards? Well, we could propose um, to take a triple bond down to a double bond, having a butyne to a butene, something like this and say one, two, count your carbons, one, two, three, four, I have four there. This is linear here because we have a sp3, or sorry, sp hybridized carbon. So I'm drawing it as in the rod-like form, and then we have a kink here. So one, two, three, four carbons. So that we could propose, hey, if I had butyne, I could make butene. So we're kind of working backwards here. So that's one way to approach this problem. And I tell my students, hey, whatever it takes, I mean, if you get stuck, working synthetically, try retrosynthetically. So we've done that in two steps, home to third, third to second base, and now we may just propose how could we work synthetically to butyne, one butyne. So let's look at that, and, uh, and let's put in the reagent, what reagent would we have had to have going from butyne to butene? I hope you can recognize what you would have used you would have said, yes, I know of a way to go from butyne to butene. So let's go to the triple bond, knowing that I need to get it close to the acetylene that I have. So a triple bond here and a triple bond here. All I need to do now is alkylate. If I can just find, or remember a way from my notes to alkylate a triple bond, that is put two more carbons off of the triple bond, then I'm, I have come up with a reaction sequence that will take me from acetylene to 1,2-dibromal butane. So how could we alkylate? Well, I hope you remember from, this is chapter 9, we're going to um, take an alkyne. It has to have a terminal carbon, which is a carbon connected to a hydrogen, and then that carbon is in the triple bond. So a terminal alkyne, well, we have that on both sides here. We've got both sides that we can react with if we take, if we want to alkylate, we want to replace that hydrogen here with some, with some alkyl group. So we need to use a strong base. And remember, this is that Gaulle-Lee, Gomer-Pyle type reaction wherein a 
unsaturated hydrocarbon can act as an acid towards a strong base. This is unique. We have not seen this with um, alkenes or alkanes. They do not react with strong bases for the most part. They are unreactive. But golly, instead of acting as a nucleophilic site in a polar reaction, we can have the alkyne give up a proton if it's terminal. So we can work on the proton attached to the carbon here, ripping it off with the sodium amide, leaving a negative charge on this carbon. Again, that's a different type of reaction where the alkyne is not the nucleophilic site. It is the electrophile providing electrophilic sites as protons off on terminal alkynes. So that's the first step. And in the second one, we would add our ethyl bromide because after the base is ripped off a proton from this carbon, that carbon now has a full negative charge. It can be used as a nucleophile to hit this carbon. It is nucleophilic, but it attacks as a nucleophile. And if we added these two reagents in sequence, first reaction, one day, work up, next reaction, next day, we could make our butyne. So that was working synthetically. We kind of recognized maybe I, I know a way to alkylate um, the acetylene to make a one butyne. So we can finish this, clean this up. We worked retrosynthetically, but we can now draw our arrows saying we would have used hydrogen glass or hydrogen gas on some catalytic metal, palladium, platinum, rhodium, nickel. Let's go ahead and show the arrow here. And now we have, let's get rid of that one. That was just, we had to come up with a way. It's not direct, but we can alkylate. We can reduce down to a alkene, and uh-oh, we have to use, if we're going to use a metal catalyst, we're going to have to use a limber catalyst. I apologize, because if we use this platinum or palladium, we're going to fully reduce that down. So let's change that. We don't want to go to butane, we want to go to butene. So remember, the linear catalyst is a polluted catalyst that allows us to stop at butene. And then from that butene, we know of a way to, we know of a way to make uh, the one 2 that run with butane. Chapter 6, Chapter 9, Chapter 9. One last thing I want to mention. Remember, guys, if you ever have less carbons in your reagent than you have in your final product, Always alkylate first as the reaction necessary, your alkyne. Alkylate it first, get to the right number of carbons, and then worry about making the modifications needed. Four carbons, two carbons, therefore I need to alkylate so that I have two more. That's always the first thing to do if you're starting off with an alkyne and you're needing to make modifications to form through some number of reaction steps, a final product. Thank you.